experiences I remember most is when I was at a, we were at a slave museum, and, uh, and I was going through the museum portion and was amazed, and I, I kind of consider myself a history buff, and I kind of got enthralled in the uh, information that was being provided about the history of the slave trade on the Gold Coast of Africa, and I looked up and the bus had left me there. <laughs> <laughs> so I walked out into the parking lot, and there were three Ghanaians, three African brothers, you know, who, you know, Ghana is, is, has a lot of resources, but the people are, are poor. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm trying to give you a picture of what I feel. So I got three African you know, brothers telling me to get in the car. You know, these strong African accents. And I'm trying to tell them I'm from a part of San Francisco called Lakeview where we don't play that. <laughs> and they didn't know what I was talking about. So finally I figured if I didn't get in this car, one of these cats was gonna pull out a machete or something. Okay. Yeah. So I get taken to finally catch up with the bus. And the whole bus is there. And what I realized, what I realized is that Harry Alfred runs a tight ship. <laughs> and he said we leave at a certain time, we're leaving at a certain time. But there's a reason that Harry runs such a tight ship. He reports to Kate. Don't you for a minute. Don't you for a minute think that. But, but there I had, the, I had the honor and privilege of seeing the Alfred family in action. And particularly Harry's sons and, and, and my recollections there. Correct, you had a niece there, I believe, and some other young people, exposing them to international business. And these two world accomplished lacrosse players and scholars, they were holding more business meetings than anybody else on the trip. <laughs> Every time I looked up, they were sitting down, working deals, working relationships on the mother country. So even though your father tried to give me back to Africa, <laughs> I still am a big fan of this, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I read you brothers you think you good I read your newsletter, and Harry and I, we're, we're on the other side. We're, we got an R after our names. But I think we both share an enormous amount of pride in this nation's recent accomplishments. What I've noticed about Harry, the rhetoric of President George Bush or President Barack Obama, he's fighting for our piece of the economic pie. It's not a partisan thing to him. It is an American, it's an American position. So I want to take a few minutes and just thank, uh, talk about what we're doing in California and what I'm attempting to do nationally, uh, not only here with the California Public Utilities Commission, but utilities throughout North America. And, and, and my effort to uh, increase the engagement that African American businesses have with these monopolies and other common carriers that have, to a large degree, unfettered, unchallenged access to the marketplace, which gives more reasons why we have to stand up and remain vigilant in this area. And I want to go back to a legislative tri caucus hearing that we had up in Sacramento about four months ago. And the tri caucus, similar to what you have in your states, is Latino, Asia Pacific Islander, and Black caucuses here in, uh, in the legislature uh, of, of California. And at this particular hearing, a dear friend of mine, the president of the Latino caucus, Gil Sevilla, out of Los Angeles, a man who supported Barack Obama from the beginning, took Obama to Texas. Okay. He walked into the hearing. At the time, the, the legislature was questioning representatives from Sprint, Comcast, and at and all of whom so happened to be African American, about their diversity performance in California. And Gil Steele walked in and said, wait a minute, I want to know what's going on with brown people, brown businesses. I want to know how much, I want to see the receipts and the invoices of Hispanic businesses doing business with you in this state. I wanted to give him a standing ovation at that time. I wish I had video so I could take it to black elected officials, uh -huh. so I could take it to black public officials and say to them, you have a birthright obligation wow. to stand up and fight for your constituents, mm -hmm. to make certain that we have a part of the American dream. So I wasn't mad at you, Senator Steele. I admired you. I took notes. I learned from you.
because I have found that you're respected more when you stand up for something. And the notion that when we talk about diversity, we can't say black people, we can't say African American, we can't talk about our vested interest in this economy, is something that I'm seeing too often amongst our public officials, but I'm seeing the exact reverse amongst the other ethnic minorities. So I encourage you, you know, uh, Larry Ivory, my dear friend, who's promised to heckle me based on some things he saw in Africa. <laughs> but he shared with me how Illinois is creating, the Illinois Black Chamber is creating a pack. You know, and, 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 and that's what time it is. And play both sides. Competition. Don't stop giving it away. Fred, we were in Oakland yesterday at the African American Chamber of Luncheon, and Don Ferrada was the scheduled speaker. Don Ferrada is running for mayor. They didn't allow anyone else to speak. They're other mayoral candidates. Okay, Don Ferrado opposed my confirmation of the California Public Utilities Commission. Thanks to Fred Jordan and the African Chambers and the Latino Chambers and the Asian Chambers throughout the state of California, we won. Mm -hmm. But the point being, I saw Michael Baines, the developer outside, he said, Timothy, can you believe this? We're having a mayoral candidate speak, and there's nothing we got. There's nothing we got. We're giving him the microphone to all these businesses. You know, just based on some kind of promise that is associated with it. We're way more sophisticated than that. When you invite Timothy Allen Simon down to San Diego, you make damn sure that Timothy Allen Simon is talking to you about the business opportunities that you represent. You make sure Timothy Allen Simon keeps a transactional focus. I don't have a problem with the banquets and the the, the forums and the balls. Some some chamber presidents I think will sell another for a platinum sponsorship. And I, and, I, and I get that. I get that. But what is more important is keeping our eyes on the opportunities that are creating the jobs. As Fred mentioned, the California Public Utilities Commission, we oversee about fifty-six billion per annum in consumer spending. We regulate telecom. We regulate, we, we regulate industry, we regulate transportation, we regulate investment-owned utility water. We just had a, uh, a major legislation in the area of water conservation that will be affecting the 20% of portable water that we regulate in California under the investor-owned water utilities. And that makes us one of the largest water regulators in the United States. So no matter where you go in California, you're touching something, as Fred says, that the Public Utilities Commission regulates. And it's my obligation to make sure that if you're touching that infrastructure, if you're an end user of that energy, that water, that broadband, that somewhere along the line an African American business was engaged in its creation, in its maintenance, and its deployment. We have in California Assembly Bill 3678, which was authored by Los Angeles Assemblywoman Gwen Moore. And I call her the patron saint of Wendy procurement in the utilities realm. And with this legislation created, and this is before Proposition 209 in California, but because